This is Real Estate Rookie episode 176. My name is Ashley Kerr, and I'm here with my co-host, Tony Robinson, for Rookie Reply. And welcome to the Real Estate Rookie Podcast, where we focus on the investors who are at that beginning part of their journey, giving you the inspiration, the information you need to keep going or to, to get started. So, Ashley Kerr, what's, uh, what's new? What's going on? Give the world an update. Well, um, I am back on my couch. I finally, which seems like forever, three months ago, I guess, I finally got my ACL surgery. So I had my, yeah. tore my ACL, my MCL, my MCL healed on its own. So I had to get my ACL done two days ago. And so I'm here on the couch uh, recovering. <laughs> Yeah, well, wishing you a speedy recovery, Ashley, and uh, just you know, take it easy next time you're on the slopes, okay? <laughs> like I, I don't, I don't want you back here in a couple months with the other MCL and ACL all all uh, damaged and whatnot. Yeah, I'll probably be from wake surfing now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> switch to a summer sport. Yeah. Well, we, we, we got a we got a decent story for today, right? Um, so those of you who've been following the podcast for a while, uh, you, you probably have heard me try to sell you my house in Louisiana. Um, but you know, luckily for all of you, I was able to sell it to, to someone who I think is going to use it as a as a primary residence, which is probably what it made sense for. Um, but Ash and I were, were talking, we figured it might be a, a really cool, I don't know, case study, I guess, to kind of share the the backstory and the numbers with you all on kind of how this Louisiana property went down, um, how much money I lost on this deal. And, um, you know, hopefully you guys can get some lessons from it. So I don't know, Ash, anything you want to add before I get into the the backstory? Here? Well, I think that just we've talked about this deal for over a year now, and this is going to be the episode that finally puts the whole journey <laughs> together <laughs> as to how you purchased it and yeah. how you kind of ended up with it. And what yeah. the deal looks like now. So first of all, congratulations on finally selling it. I I think Thank both you. of us were looking forward to not having to talk about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just like and just like fun fact, right? So that the city that this property is in is in the city of Shreveport, Louisiana. And Ashley, until like two weeks ago, thought that it was in Freeport, Louisiana. So uh, there is no Freeport, Louisiana that I'm aware of. So just, you know, if anyone else was confused, it's Shreveport. Yeah, uh, honestly, Louisiana. I didn't know if it was Freeport or Treeport. So definitely, I, <laughs> <laughs> for how long? we talked about this deal i was never very clear on the city but i did yeah. not think it was shreveport <laughs> neither of which is correct so yeah well well let, let's get into it then right so um this property was a single family um in the city of shreveport and this is actually the second investment property that i'd ever purchased right so um you know exciting right property number two i think everyone's pumped for that um and what what made this deal I think unique on the initial purchase was that the financing I was able to get for this deal was really, 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 really good. Um, I essentially had zero dollars out of pocket. Like I literally did not have to bring anything to the, to the closing table to buy this property. Um, I found a credit union uh, out in Shreveport that was willing to lend on both the purchase price uh, and all of the construction costs as long as that total project cost was less than I think like 72% of the after repair value. So I'm, I'm just going to run through the numbers really quickly and, and then I'll, I'll pause for a sec. So we bought the property for about $72,000. Um, on the rehab, we spent about $45,000. So we were all in for about 117. And the way that they kind of assess the loan is during, uh, during escrow, I had to submit my scope of work. And then based on that scope of work, the bank sent out an appraiser and the appraiser walked the property in its current condition. And they said, Hey, based on the scope of work that you gave me and me walking the property, here's what I think the property will be worth once you complete your rehab. And that appraiser pegged it at a $177,000 ARV. So pretty decent spread there, right? So I'm at 117 all in. ARV is 177, which is like, I don't know, like 65% or something like that at the ARV. So for the bank, I checked those boxes and they said, Hey, you know, Tony, you found a good deal. We're going to fund everything for you. 
So that that's that's why I bought it to begin with, right? Because it was it was really good, uh, really good financing. Um, so Tony, can one, can you still yeah, get good. financing like that right now? Do you think? So I know when I talked to that credit union during COVID, they had stopped that specific loan program. Um, but you know, I haven't purchased in Shreveport since, so I'm not sure if they're uh, if they're still offering that. Um, but you know, I mean, things have definitely starting to loosen back up since COVID has kind of subsided a little bit. So I would assume that there's probably there's probably a bank out there somewhere that's doing something like this. Cool. All right. So we we bought the property, right? We end up closing on it. Um, rehab takes, I think, like three and a half, four months, something like that. Um, we, we bought it right near the end of the year. So like December time frame, and uh, there was some bad weather that kind of slowed things down. But I want to say we were, we were completely done with this thing by like the middle of, uh, middle of March. Okay. So the, 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 con the construction loan or the loan that we used to purchase, it was also really good debt, right? So it was a one year interest only at 6%. So we had a really low payment during that first year because, you know, it was interest only right at 6%. Um, so anyway, we, we end up getting a tenant in there. Uh, we hire a property management company. Uh, we're able to rent it out for thirteen fifty, and uh, I want to say the mortgage was like I, I was trying to find the initial closing disclosure, but I couldn't find it. But I want to say the mortgage was somewhere around like I don't know eleven hundred bucks, something like that. Um, so we were probably cash flowing not a whole lot, like one hundred and fifty bucks maybe, right, on this one property, All right? And, you know, no no money out of pocket, one hundred and fifty bucks. You know, hey, figured why not, right? Um, so we have a tenant in there from, I want to say like March of 2020, uh, they stay there for a year. And, uh, so for March of 2020, and then they end up moving out in March of 2021, or I think like the end of February, 2021. And, you know, during that year time frame, we end up abandoning long-term rentals altogether. And we, you know, we went kind of crazy with the short-term rental stuff and we decided, Hey, we don't want to keep this property anymore. Like it doesn't really fit with the rest of our portfolio. It doesn't fit with our long-term goals. So, you know, let's sell it. So once the tenant moved out, actually, let me take one step back, right? So one month before the tenant moved out, so the tenant moved out in February, one month before the tenant moved out, we get a note from our insurance company saying, hey, you know, I don't know what the heck had changed, but our insurance premium doubled. So initially, we were already paying pretty expensive uh, money for the uh, flood premium. It was $2,700 $2, a year, and it ended up jumping up to over four grand a year on the insurance premium for the flood. Um, so when you, when you added in that new cost, our mortgage for that property went up to like $1,400 and you know, like, like 1450 or something like that. Right. So even more than what we were renting it out for. So we lost money the last month the tenant was there because they were only paying 1350. We had to pay the mortgage of 1450. And then we still have to pay our, like our property management company, I think like a hundred bucks or something like that. So we lost money. We said, Hey, let's just sell it. Right. Let's, let's just get it off our hands and, and move on. Um, so that property ends up sitting empty for an, an entire 14 months or 13 months, right? Because we just sold it uh, last month. So during that time, you were making the mortgage payments out of pocket. We were making a $1,400 a month mortgage payment for, I want to say it was, it was almost a year exactly, right? So whatever 1,400 times 12 is, it's like almost $17,000 that we spent over the year uh, carrying that mortgage. Right. And it wasn't because we weren't trying. Right. We had the property listed. We were we, we initially listed it for less than what it appraised for. Right. So remember, it had appraised for 170. I think we initially listed it for like 165 or something like that. And we just kind of kept pulling down the price every couple of months, hoping that it would sell. And uh, it, it just wasn't moving. And then, you know, we hadn't been to the property since we since we closed on it originally. And we kept seeing some of the, the buyer's remarks, like when they would turn the property away and they kept mentioning like a buckling of some tile in the like in the hallway or something like that. So we had the realtor go out and check it out. And he was like, hey, yeah, it seems like something's happening here. So we had to send a crew out there and they end up finding some kind of problem with like the subfloor that costs like another eight thousand dollars to fix. Right. So now we're in seventeen thousand thousand dollars for the uh, uh for the mortgage payment we have to spend another eight thousand dollars to repair the floor um and then we end up dropping the price below what we owed on it right so we just wanted to get the thing sold so i think we ended up selling it for like i can't even remember what the number was i think we sold it for like 129 and our um uh, our mortgage balance was like 135 something like that and um I think it was 130 and then we we sold it for like 129 but you know closing costs and all that stuff so when we ended up actually selling the property we didn't get money back we had to write a check to escrow for I think like $4,000 right so you add everything up we had $17,000 
uh, in the mortgage that we had to carry for a year. We had another $8,000 that we had to spend to repair the flooring. And then we got to write another check at closing for $4,000. So that's $29,000 that we, uh, that we bumped, dumped into this, into the Shreveport property. And, um, that's why I was trying to sell it to everybody for, for an entire year. Tony, but you're still investing. Yeah. So why did this property not scare you from yep. continuing to be an investor? Yeah. So man, that, that there, there's so many answers to that question, right? Um, the, the first thing is that I learned a lot going through this process. And I think what I learned has made me a, a better investor, right? Anytime you got to write a check for $30,000, you, you're, you're going to learn something, hopefully. Um, I will probably never buy another property in a flood zone. <laughs> like, the, you know, I'm scarred for life because of that. Um, I think I'll be more selective of the locations that I invest in just in general, you know. Um, this, this house actually was at the end of a really nice block. Um, but it was literally at the end of the block. And then right next door to this house was an apartment complex and the apartment complex had some riffraff. Like even during the renovation, we had people break in and like steal some of the contractors tools. And a lot of the feedback we were getting from buyers was like, Hey, we like this location. You know, we like this neighborhood, but we don't like the fact that this is the one that's next to that apartment complex. So I think being able to kind of do a better job of knowing the the area to say, okay, Hey, here is a potential rent. Like it works for, for a renter. But for someone that wants to buy, that's a potential red flag. So I think kind of knowing what what the differences are between a rent, renter wants and what a what a long term buyer wants. Um, so yeah, so not buying in a flood zone, uh, making sure I, I do a little bit more research on my market if it's something that I that I think I'll end up selling. Um, and then the third thing is that you can't always predict everything either, right? Like on paper. We, 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 we knew that there was some flood insurance costs and we budgeted for that. The number still made sense, but my, even my, my flood insurance guy was shocked that the premium went up and we shopped, you know, we shopped for like, you know, multiple, multiple different uh, people to cover this. And everyone's quote was coming in around the same. So it was just, I don't know what caused that shift. I don't know if there was some kind of risk that they saw. Obviously there was, um, but I don't think there was a way that I could have planned for that. Um, and I think that's something to understand as well is that like, even if you do your best due diligence on the, on the, on the front end, there are still going to be surprises, right? And you, and you got to do your best to roll with them. But I'm I'm grateful actually for this uh, the Shreveport property because it was the first property that my partner Omid and I did together. And had we not done that deal together, you know, who knows if we'd be building this you know short term rental empire that we're working on right now. So even with with you know the thirty thousand dollars that we lost, we've more than made that up with the money that we've made from our short term rentals. And I think the fact that you guys had that test in your relationship too, <laughs> yeah. of going through that big struggle, that yeah. big obstacle of this property and figuring out what to do with it. If you guys could survive that as a partnership, I think you guys I, will be able to get through a lot of things that will come up during your partnership together. So I think just having that, you had that test early on is already going to make you guys better and stronger. And, you know, empire. I don't know if, if, if Omid is just crazy, but he still trusts me to, to find all the deals for us. And, you know, <laughs> outside of that one, I think all the other ones have worked out, worked out okay for us. But, you know, and, and here's the thing too, Ash, right? Like people, people will go to college, you know, and, and spend way more than $30,000 and get a degree that may or may not help them achieve financial independence, right? And, and build the wealth that they want. But people are terrified of taking that same $30,000 and, um, you know, potentially losing it on a, on a real estate deal, right? Um, and, you know, and I get that, right? Because $30,000 isn't, isn't a small sum of money. But I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is, you should be just as willing to invest if if your true goal is to become you know financially free through real estate investing you should be just as willing to kind of pay the price on that side as you would for a four year degree because in my mind you know the 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 real estate education the real world you know bumps and bruises and losses of real estate will probably teach you more than sitting in a classroom you know for four years at a, at a university 
Well, Tony, thank you so much for sharing the full deal with us today and for going through what you learned and what others can watch for. I think it will definitely be beneficial to some of our listeners and hopefully not make them scared to get into real estate because there there can be a bad deal, but you learn from it. It turns into an opportunity cost, but there's so many more great deals out there. Yeah. I'm Ashley at Wealth From Rentals, and he's Tony at Tony J. Robinson, and we will be back on Wednesday with another Real Estate Rookie podcast. Mm-hmm.